If you look at the DNA of Michael and you look at the DNA from the skeletal remains, there's a match. Wow. The DNA evidence points to this being Richard III. The story begins not in a grand cathedral or royal crypt, but beneath a quiet parking lot in Leicester, England. In 2012, a team of archaeologists dug through the cold earth, unaware that what they were about to uncover would shatter the myths of royal purity that had stood unchallenged for centuries. There, curled awkwardly in a shallow grave, lay the skeletal remains of a man with a twisted spine, a body buried hastily, stripped of honor. The DNA would confirm the unthinkable, this was King Richard III, the last Plantagenet king. But his genetic code would reveal something even more explosive, a secret that threatened to unravel the entire royal bloodline. Scientists had expected to confirm lineage. Instead, they found a genetic break, proof that somewhere in England's most powerful dynasty, the royal blood had been diluted or replaced. It was a revelation that would force historians to reconsider everything they knew about the Plantagenets, a dynasty whose story was already soaked in betrayal, madness, and mystery. The Plantagenet name carries both glory and darkness. For nearly 300 years, from the 12th to the 15th century, their blood ruled England, producing some of the most powerful, cunning, and ruthless monarchs in history. They built empires, ignited wars, and left behind legends of chivalry and conquest. Yet, behind every tale of triumph lurked a whisper of deceit, a mysterious death here, an illegitimate heir there, and bloodlines that never quite seemed to add up. Historians had long debated the truth about these rulers, but for the first time in history, science had a voice in the conversation. With DNA analysis, every grave could become a witness, every bone a confession. As researchers began to piece together the Plantagenet genome, they realized something extraordinary. The royal family tree, so carefully recorded in parchment and gold, might have been a masterpiece of illusion. The rediscovery of Richard III's remains was supposed to be a victory for history, a simple confirmation of what textbooks had long claimed. But from the moment the bones were exhumed, anomalies began to appear. The skeleton matched the king's physical descriptions perfectly, the curved spine, the battle wounds, the age. Yet when scientists extracted DNA from the teeth and femur, they were confronted with a puzzle. The mitochondrial DNA, passed down through the maternal line, matched living descendants of Richard's sister, confirming identity beyond doubt. But the Y chromosome, passed from father to son, told a different story. It didn't match. Somewhere in the Plantagenet family tree, a non-paternal event had occurred, meaning that at least one royal ancestor was not who history claimed him to be. This wasn't just a scandal of lineage, it was a genetic time bomb that rewrote the narrative of royal succession. If the chain of father-to-son inheritance was broken, who among England's kings truly carried royal blood? To understand the scale of the mystery, scientists from the University of Leicester expanded their study. They compared Richard III's DNA to that of known descendants of the Plantagenet male line, men who traced their ancestry back to Edward III. The result stunned them. The Y chromosome mismatch wasn't a fluke, it was definitive proof of a hidden event, a secret affair, or an illegitimate child somewhere between the 14th and 15th centuries. This revelation meant that at least one king, possibly Edward IV or his descendants, might not have been a true Plantagenet by blood. The implications for British history were staggering. If the wrong man had inherited the throne, the entire chain of royal succession could have been altered. But what began as a single genetic anomaly soon grew to something larger. Other royal remains began showing inconsistencies, patterns too precise to ignore. 
The Plantagenet DNA was not just fragmented, it was filled with contradictions, gaps, and substitutions. It was as if someone had tampered with the royal record, not in ink, but in blood itself. Following Richard's case, scientists widened their search. They began collecting DNA from royal burial sites, Westminster Abbey, Canterbury Cathedral, even forgotten monasteries. The goal, to build a genetic database of England's monarchs and their kin. The deeper they looked, the stranger the story became. Some remains aligned perfectly with known genealogies, others did not. Skeletons thought to belong to known kings or princes produced unexpected genetic markers, foreign ancestry, mismatched chromosomes, or mutations inconsistent with medieval European bloodlines. In one case, a burial once believed to be a minor noble turned out to share close maternal DNA with Henry II. In another, a supposed royal cousin's remains revealed ancestry linking back not to England, but to France. Every discovery chipped away at the illusion of an unbroken royal bloodline. The once revered Plantagenets were beginning to look less like a family of divine right and more like a tangled web of deception, forged identities, and genetic cover-ups. Among the earliest and most shocking findings came from the heart of one of England's greatest icons, Richard the Lionheart. In 2013, French scientists examined the tiny lead box that once held his embalmed heart long buried beneath the cathedral floor in Rouen. When the samples were analyzed, traces of mercury, pollen, and plant matter were found, a combination that puzzled researchers. The presence of certain plant toxins, including digitalis and belladonna, suggested deliberate poisoning, subtle, slow-acting, and easily mistaken for infection. But it wasn't just the toxins that drew attention. DNA extracted from the remaining tissue showed signs of immune distress, a genetic signature consistent with long-term exposure to poison. For centuries, chroniclers described Richard's death as a tragic accident, the result of a crossbow wound turned septic. But now evidence hinted that the Lionheart's death may have been orchestrated, a betrayal from within his own court, masked by the limits of medieval medicine. If Richard had been murdered, it was not merely regicide, it was an act that could have rewritten succession itself, because with his death, the line of legitimate Plantagenet heirs began to fracture, and the dynasty's genetic integrity began to dissolve. When scientists examined the bones of Henry II, the founder of the Plantagenet dynasty, they expected to confirm simple lineage, the genetic foundation upon which centuries of royal power had been built. But instead, they uncovered something far more sinister. Traces of mercury and lead were embedded deep in the marrow, far beyond what could be explained by environmental exposure. In medieval times, mercury was often used as a primitive treatment for ailments, but at the concentrations found, this was no treatment. It was a slow, methodical poisoning. Historians have long portrayed Henry II as a brilliant yet volatile ruler, a man whose ambition built empires and destroyed families. But the genetic findings hinted at something chilling, the great king may have been deliberately poisoned from within his own court. And the motive? Power. Henry's rule was marked by rebellion from his sons, most notably Richard and John, both of whom had much to gain from his decline. Scientists now suspect the toxins may have weakened Henry's mind and judgment in his later years, paving the way for the internal collapse of the dynasty. It was the first known case in which DNA and chemistry together painted a picture not of noble death, but of royal assassination. Following the genetic break discovered in Richard III's Y chromosome, genealogists began tracing back through the Plantagenet line to locate where the fracture occurred. The closer they looked, the clearer the pattern became 
and all arrows pointed to a scandal buried deep in the heart of the 15th century. The likely source, Edward IV, the charismatic king whose reign was defined by charm, victory, and whispers of illegitimacy. Rumors had circulated even during Edward's lifetime that he was not the true son of Richard, Duke of York. His mother, Cecily, Neville had been living far from her husband during the time of Edward's conception, and gossip spread like wildfire through court corridors. But these were dismissed as political slander until modern DNA revived them centuries later. The Y chromosome mismatch between Richard III and modern male descendants of Edward III seemed to confirm it. Somewhere between those two kings, a false heir had ascended the throne. If Edward IV was not the biological son of the Duke of York, it meant that his sons, including the two famous princes in the tower, had no legitimate claim to the crown. In other words, the War of the Roses, one of the bloodiest conflicts in English history, may have been fought over a lie. As geneticists delved deeper into the DNA lineage, their attention turned toward Elizabeth Woodville, Edward IV's queen, one of the most controversial women in English history. She was beautiful, ambitious, and dangerously intelligent, the first commoner to marry into the English royal family. Her marriage to Edward had infuriated the nobility and sparked decades of civil unrest, but what science uncovered about her descendants was even more unsettling. Analysis of genetic material from her known relatives revealed unexpected markers of Southern European and even North African ancestry, not impossible, but rare in English nobility at the time. This finding suggested that Elizabeth's ancestry may have been far more diverse and far less royal than the records claimed. Even more surprising was the mitochondrial DNA pattern seen in some supposed descendants of her line, which hinted at a maternal mismatch. In simpler terms, one of the women in her lineage might have substituted a child intentionally or by deception, creating a hidden swap in the royal bloodline. Historians began to revisit long-dismissed rumors that during the turmoil of the Wars of the Roses, certain royal infants were secretly replaced or smuggled away. Could it be that even the princes themselves weren't who history believed them to be? After the mysterious disappearance of the young princes, Edward V and his brother Richard, in the Tower of London, suspicion naturally turned to the man who took the throne next, Henry VII, founder of the Tudor dynasty. Henry's legitimacy had always been fragile. His claim to the throne came through a distant maternal link, barely tethered to the Plantagenet line. But genetic evidence now raises an even deeper question. Did Henry fabricate his bloodline altogether? When remains believed to belong to Henry VII were compared with DNA samples from known descendants, researchers noted subtle but undeniable inconsistencies. Certain alleles, genetic traits that should have been passed down, were missing or altered. Some scientists have suggested tampering, selective embalming materials, chemical interference, or even deliberate contamination. But the motive, if true, was clear. Henry's rule depended on convincing England that he was the rightful heir who had united the warring houses. A false bloodline would have destroyed him and his dynasty. This realization reframes one of history's greatest political victories as something darker, a cover-up sealed not by sword, but by science itself. Perhaps no mystery in English history has haunted the public imagination more than that of the princes in the tower, the two young sons of Edward IV who vanished in 1483. For centuries, their fate remained an open wound. In 1674, two small skeletons were discovered beneath a staircase in the Tower of London. They were buried in Westminster Abbey under royal order, 
believed to be the missing princes, but DNA evidence tells a different story. When scientists examined the bones in the early 2000s, they found that the remains were too degraded for full sequencing, yet partial mitochondrial data indicated that the children were not siblings. Even more startling, their maternal DNA didn't match Elizabeth Woodville's lineage. If these weren't the princes, then who were they? The leading theory suggests a chilling possibility. The real princes may have been smuggled out of London and replaced with the bodies of unrelated children to conceal their escape or to stage a murder that never truly happened. But if they lived, where did they go? Some historians believe one of them may have resurfaced years later as the mysterious Perkin Warbeck, who claimed to be the lost Prince Richard. And now, with DNA from supposed Warbeck descendants under study, scientists are closer than ever to confirming whether that claim, long dismissed as fraud, might have been true all along. Centuries later, DNA links to the Plantagenet still exist, hidden in ordinary people. Modern genealogists found dozens of families carrying fragments of royal DNA scattered across England. The bloodline didn't vanish, it simply went underground. One discovery shocked scientists. A living descendant in Canada with a genetic match to Richard III's maternal line. His family had no idea of their royal roots. Suddenly, an ordinary man's DNA held a secret that once defined an empire. Researchers uncovered a strange mutation recurring in several plantagenet-linked samples, a marker tied to stress, aggression, and high intelligence. It wasn't just heritage, it was evolution, shaped by power, war, and betrayal. Not all data reached the public. Sources claim parts of the plantagenet genome were sealed under government order. Was it privacy or protection? Some believe hidden results could challenge modern royal legitimacy. A confidential report hinted that one plantagenet gene might link to rare neurological traits, leadership, ambition, and volatility. If true, this royal signature could explain both the dynasty's brilliance and its curse. Beneath a forgotten chapel floor, archaeologists uncovered bones that didn't match any known burial record. DNA traced them to a lost plantagenet prince, one erased from history. His existence alone could upend centuries of royal lineage. Genetic markers showed high stress and immune anomalies in several plantagenet remains. Could their downfall stem not from politics, but biology? Scientists now suspect a hereditary condition may have haunted the family for generations. Modern analysis revealed an unexpected genetic break. Somewhere, a royal affair rewrote history. A single act of infidelity centuries ago may mean half of England's kings weren't true Plantagenets at all. The truth hides in plain sight. Deep sequencing revealed fragments that didn't align with known European DNA. Some scientists whispered of foreign markers, perhaps Crusader blood, or something far older. It was as if the dynasty carried secrets beyond England itself. When the data was cross-checked, something chilling emerged. A shared gene tied to heightened aggression and visionary thinking. It's in modern leaders, too. The plantagenet legacy isn't gone. It's evolving, quietly guiding the world still.